Sewell. I am um, a, a, a um, asexuality studies researcher in the Gender, Feminist, and Women's Studies program at York University in Toronto. Um, the slides that you'll see are just, they don't directly relate to what I'm talking about. They're just things that I found really fun. There, there's various comics online. Many of you have probably seen them before. But um, I just wanted them to provide an attractive visual to uh, my presentation. So when people find out uh, what I do research on, the two most common questions I get are, what is asexuality? And are you, as an am I, asexual? I try to answer these questions in ways that complicate people's assumptions about what asexuality is and what it looks like, troubling what they expect and want to hear from. Because I am presenting at this asexuality conference, I'm very, very excited to be here. It is important for me to share with you that I do think of myself as great asexual, great asexual. I do not routinely discuss this because I do not feel it is my responsibility to make others feel comfortable about locating me in terms of, uh, in terms of sexuality and aiding them in deciding whether or not I am worth talking to or flirting with based on my fuckability. I began doing work on asexuality over five years ago, and since then my relationship to asexuality academically and practically has gone through many shifts. My work to date has thought about asexuality in the context of a sexually preoccupied Western context, examined the scientific and popular discourses that circulate around asexuality, explore how asexually identified men navigate the sexual imperative, reflected on what an interdisciplinary asexuality studies has to offer to sexuality studies more broadly, and in a forthcoming piece I, I co-wrote with a colleague of mine, Danielle Cooper, tried to expand the parameters of asexuality through the concept of asexual residences. The project I am currently working on seeks to provide a sustained analysis of asexuality that considers its emergence as a category while also troubling and expanding the terms of, the of that very category. I am conducting a series of interviews in which I invite you to take part if you're interested that will focus on the interconnectedness of asexual experience with LGBTQ identification, race, gender, and class. This project seeks to explore the various ways in which asexuality is lived and understood across the asexual spectrum by people who identify as asexual, those who are gray asexual or demi-asexual, and those who for various political, relational, and personal reasons might not want to identify as asexual per se, but nonetheless find much resonance in asexuality. The goal is to consider the particular challenges facing asexual spectrum and asexually identified individuals considering what challenges and opportunities are faced in the context of a culture invested in sex as a form of social belonging. So today I would like to share with you some of my initial thoughts regarding this project. I will focus on outlining the existing research and identifying the gaps that exist in this work. Asexuality is expanding as a topic of study, study, providing a new set of tools and questions for reading sexual histories, cultures, identities, and practices. At the same time, it is clear even at these early stages of academic explorations of asexuality that researchers working on asexuality approach it from various disciplines and schools of thought, including by way of feminist and queer theory, sociology, and psychology. For instance, examples of scientific approaches to, to the study of asexuality include early mentions uh, from the 80s by Michael Storms and Paula Nurius, as well as a growing stream of contemporary work on asexuality. Sorry, this isn't actually the chart. The chart is um, also a spectrum. Here. <laughs> um, as well as the contemporary works sparked, in, of course, by the creation of Avon and by Anthony Bogart's 2004 with much follow-up work by people including Lori Grotto and colleagues, including Mark Mora Gill, who's here to speak today, uh, Cynthia Graham and uh, Nicole Faust, Catherine Eichen, Ellen Van Vandenhoven, Janique Hoblin. Yes, 
question. So it goes back to yeah, Lori Brado and colleagues, including her work with Maura Yule, Cynthia Graham, and Nicole Krauss, Catherine Eichen, et al., Ellen Van der Hoover, et al., and Janique Hoagland. And this is a complaint. This is a complaint. Notably, there is a distinctly asexual voice that talks back to this research on blogs and more formally in academic publications, including that of C.J. Deleuze and Chasen and Andrew Hinderley. Also, critiques of this literature and of the medicalization of asexuality more broadly have been lodged by myself and more recently by Jacinta. On the other hand, there is a growing interest in analyzing asexuality from feminist and queer perspectives. These two overlap sometimes as well, just to be clear. Early feminist mentions of asexuality, exploring asexuality among women and lesbians, respectively, are those of Myra Johnson and Esther Rothblum and Kathleen Brehan. The first contemporary and non-scientific study of asexuality is Kristen Scherer's Covington Asexual Identity from 2008, which explores asexual identity through drawing on interviews with the community. The responses from her participants speak to the challenge of identifying as asexual today, of navigating relationships with others when one is asexual, as well as to the complexity of lived experiences of asexuality. So there's many other feminists working on this too. One thing I will mention is a recent book that was published, not sure if you heard of it, it's called Feminist and Queer Approaches, Asexuality to Feminist and Queer Approaches, editors Carly June Sarankowski and Megan Knights. Also feminist disability scholar Yoon Jung Kim has argued that a critique of the forced desexualization of people with disabilities does not rule out an exploration of the effective potentials of asexuality. In addition to this feminist literature on asexuality, several important studies independently demonstrate that asexuals do experience discrimination and pressure. Again, not quite directly related, but just something, you know, having a conversation between the visual and the <laughs> This growing body of literature on asexuality comes from many different schools of thought, each which has different methods, theories, and politics, and which has a unique contribution to make to the study of asexuality. How am I with time? Does anyone know? Okay, so I will, so this is the overview of the research. Now I'm going to skip to the end, I have to cut out a part of it. Um, so from an examination of this literature, many areas can be identified as in need of further research, specifically. And I'm going to list uh, four here, and then I'm going to mention how my project tries to address them, and, and then we'll conclude. So maybe I'll So one, while there is a handful of qualitative research existing on asexuality, there is nothing that considers asexuality outside of asexual identification per se. That is, none of the existing studies consider the presence of asexuality outside, before, or prior to self-aware and self-articulated identification. For instance, what does it look like to people, what does asexuality look like to people who for political or practical reasons do not perfectly identify with asexuality? What are the various ambivalences around identifying as asexual? What are the relationships and overlaps between celibacy and asexuality? How is asexuality relevant to groups that are desexualized and assumed to be asexual without having the opportunity to identify as such? Okay. Uh, number two. Notably, while there is some coverage of asexuality from feminist perspectives and queer perspectives, uh, in general, the research does not undertake, there's a lack of considerations of how asexuality interacts with systematic oppressions related to gender, trans identification, LGBTQ experiences, race, and class. 
Third, there are next to no attempts at rendering asexual histories or assembling asexual archives, aside from what is done online. All studies on asexuality focus on the current historical moment. It is therefore interesting to ask, how can we look for asexuality historically? What methods and strategies will provide us with effective ways for thinking about how asexuality existed before it was termed a sexual identity or orientation? There are a few things exploring this, so I am generalizing a little, but in general. All existing research and for all existing research is occidental in scope and focus and mostly North American based. Research needs to be undertaken to explore what forms of asexuality are common in non-North American and especially transnational contexts. Does asexuality appear in the same way transnationally? What are the various ways of inhabiting asexuality in different cultural contexts, local and global, urban and rural? So, as such, the goals of my current project are as follows. One, to develop drawing on interview materials, an asexual analytic, or a series of perspectives that contributes to the fields of feminist and queer sexuality studies and that converses with LGBTQ concerns. Until recently, asexuality has often been left out of feminist and queer scholarship and writing on sex, sexuality, and sexual identities. To include asexuality into the queer alphabet is not only to expand queerness based on diversity, but also to ask questions about the role of sex, sexual attraction, and sexual desire in sexual identification. Developing asexuality as a method thus provides a series of insights such as the ones I highlighted above for thinking about the role of asexuality can play in feminism and queerness. Two, to contribute to asexuality studies both theoretically and through conducting a series of interviews. So while there is qualitative work, there isn't a real attention, um, or there, there's a, a, a most attention is to uh, outright identified asexual. So this study will broaden what the category asexual includes, like this discussion today of demisexuality and gray A asexual, providing a more variegated and broad understanding of what constitutes asexuality. This will contribute to demonstrating that asexuality is of prime importance not to a select few, but to all who wish to critically engage with sexuality today. Asexuality is important to everyone, and there are many ways to be asexual. I'd like one more. Three, to consider asexuality with outright attentions to questions of gender, race, and LGBTQ experience. This project studies asexuality in the North American context, taking interest in how asexuality is variously lived and experienced based on other aspects of one's identity and life experiences. This will take shape through an attentiveness to structures of race, class, nationality, sexual identification, gender, the rural, and urban. Four, to compile a creative archive of instantiations of asex asexuality that trouble our understanding of asexuality and sexuality. Developing a creative archive of asexuality in line with the online materials that are already available will help us to understand asexuality as, a, as broader than was previously imagined and as central to feminist and queer histories of sex and sexuality. And finally, five, to consider the particular challenges facing asexual spectrum spectrum and asexually identified individuals, considering what challenges and opportunities they face in the context of a culture invested in sex. As we all know, asexuality is many things to many people. It is time that the research began to reflect this in nuance and 